time to do a watercolor sketch. We're gonna paint, but we're gonna sketch, but with watercolor, not with pencil. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. I've been itching to do some watercolor facial studies. Um, just love painting portraits. Uh, I know I haven't done a lot on this channel, but I hope to do more. And one of the things I've been playing around with a lot is sketching with watercolor, not with a pencil. And I have a particular process that I use when I do that and I, what? Yeah, no, you can't erase watercolor. I realized that, I was about to say that. Well, just trust me, okay? One of the great places to find royalty-free faces to sketch and draw and paint is Graphic Stock, and I'd like to welcome them back for this episode as a sponsor. Graphic Stock has the largest unlimited download library of graphics, photos, vectors, and images on the internet. It's over 300,000 graphics, and the downloads are unlimited. On any other site, they charge you per image, or if it's a subscription, you're limited to how many you can download per day or per month. Some of the per image costs can be as much as 30 or more per image, depending on the resolution and the graphic. All images come with a 100% royalty free agreement. That means you cannot get sued by copyright holders. You can use the content in your commercial projects. That means you can paint and draw to your art's content, frame it, and even sell it if you like. So looking around, uh, I really kind of was drawn to this image. And so this is what I'm going to do a sketch of today. I thought it was kind of neat. Here's a couple other great images that I found that I'm anxious to do some watercolor sketches of those. But as I said, I think today I'm going to do this one. If you'd like to go on Graphic Stock and find something, uh, take advantage of this free seven day trial. You can download up to 140 images during that free trial and, that, and stockpile a number of things to get you painting and give you some nice subject matter. So go take a look. So let me show you how I approach a watercolor sketch and study and let's get started. Now the idea when you sketch with watercolor uh, and I'm, I'm showing a method basically that's, that's like you would use a pencil. So when you start off you treat your brush like a pencil or like you're doing a pencil drawing. So you want it very very light. It's the same idea that animators and cartoonists do when they draw things in a colored pencil and then go back and add the darker lines. And these can be just, just very rough. And I think I want my paint even paler than that. I'm not really trying for a likeness or necessarily even to get the very same proportions. I'm just trying to get convincing proportions. You know, the eyes in the right place. Eyes are, you know, he's looking down. When you do head and figure studies, your main focus should be proper drawing of proportions. That's the toughest part with doing uh, facial studies. There's been a lot of, of speculation as to why, but I think it's because we look at faces more than we do anything. And so it's easy to tell, even if you're not an artist, when you see another artist's work and something's not right about the face you can see it before you can see that in any other kind of art I think. I'm just gonna get the very top of the guitar I'm not going to try to do that part and maybe just a tad bit of the hands Hands are tough. Hands are really can be tough. I've spent a lot of sketchbook pages on hands. Just kind of basically um, dot and splot your way through this. I mean with some lines too. But when it's kept very light like this, then you have a lot of uh, latitude to go back and tighten it up. 
and you go from major shapes to minor details. As I feel like I've got the major shape and proportions, I just start filling in some of the details. When you're doing anything, but especially when you're doing facial studies, you constantly are looking for relationships. You know, where does the ear line up? It lines up roughly with the eye. You know, the top of the ear is roughly about the line of the eyebrow and the bottom, the, the top of the nose. The eyes are roughly in the middle of the head. The corners of the mouth line up usually with the eyeballs. And you can go in and just kind of dot those little proportions. There's a bit of a, always a shadow under the lower lip. And as you start dropping in those details and defining it, you can start getting a little more um, particular about where the detail goes. And again, I'm just using the photo as a guide for a nice study and drawing. I'm trying to make it, you know, look exactly like the photo. I just want it to be a convincing study of a human being playing the guitar. And I'm going to keep the study fairly monochromatic, but I'm going to get a little darker now and just start accentuating. some areas of detail. And what you're looking for when you start filling in some of the shadows, you're looking for value shapes. You're not looking for shapes of clothing or facial features as much as you are looking for shapes that are, are created by the shadows. So I start squinting and looking for the deepest shadows. So there's like a, a mass of shadow here and it combines part of the eyebrow with the inner eyelid in the eye and I just I just go through on a study like this I just go through and I merge all that into a shadow shape it gets to a point where you know once you've gotten down your um, proportions it gets to a point where you're just looking for almost abstract shadow shapes I want to get just a little bit of a suggestion of the fingers, the finger shapes. So what I'm doing is I'm painting negatively. I'm painting, uh, I'm not going to render these fingers in detail, but I'm painting just a little bit of the negative shadow around it. Now, if I wanted to, I could leave this like this as a study, almost a, 
a wash drawing kind of study but you can also go in and just add some color and that's what I think I'm gonna do just gonna add some very slight local uh, flesh tones here and there just gonna get a very pale orange mix and I've switched to this this quill here also holds a lot of water but has a fatter body so I can actually turn it on its edge and get some broader strokes if I want and again I'm just gonna use the same kind of brushing technique kind of a brush and dab and as with all watercolor you work light to dark so start by filling in some light colors where the shadows would go and you can darken them I don't think I'm gonna add a lot in here I think I'm just gonna tone it in places with color add some color in those shadows These studies are really fun. You see that that little bit of tone, flesh tone here and there, just really is starting to make it pop. It's really giving it some life. I could really carry this pretty far if I wanted to, but I think I want to leave it pretty loose. Just a suggestion of a flesh color in there. I think I'm going to add some color to the shirt too, but I'm not going to do the orange that's in the uh, reference. I'm going to do something cool, cooler like a blue to kind of offset those flesh tones. But again, just a very suggestive, very light wash here and there. And basically I'm just going back and popping in contrast that uh, one artist I've seen professional you go in and dot these little contrast areas he calls them PowerPoints I always like that and you know I I've always called them low lights that was my term low lights PowerPoints uh, I like the low lights too because that's the opposite of a highlight so um, they're just little pops of, of deep value dotted in here and there just to give it that little extra. Thanks everyone. I appreciate you watching. Hope you'll try some figure studies of your own. Get some good stock photography and get out there and give it a try. Have a blast. I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and maybe subscribe if you like this. And thanks again, Patreon supporters. You guys are the best. You're making this happen, and I appreciate it. And we'll see you guys next time.